What is going on, YouTube? This is Ask the Roots. So I'm going to review the third album by Drake. Basically, this album came out in the fall of 2013, and it's called Nothing Was the Same. So with this project, Drake was coming off of a high with the album Take Care, which lasted quite a bit into 2012. It was just an overall hit album between like mid-2011 to about mid-late 2012 and stuff. And to this day, this is that album is still seen as one of Drake's absolute best. Thank Me Later was a pretty solid one, and definitely a great debut, but Take Care really capitalized on Drake, and he was just all over the place throughout 2011 and 2012. But this album kind of has like some different context about it, just because it was kind of going through like certain things in rap music, at least commercial rap music, were kind of going through ardent kind of changes, things like Spotify and 2010's Trap and that type of stuff. There were some initial kind of things that when I first listened to this project back in 2013, I didn't catch as much just because I didn't realize that some of these things were going to go on to be massive trends as such. I kind of used to think that this was somewhat of a patchy album, or at least had moments that were just not quite as glaringly or just not quite as glaringly flat out awesome. But now I kind of look after it as like, you know, this actually did have some revolutionary kind of impact. And I just remember thinking, I mean, by the time, you know, sometimes they talk about getting to like the junior jinx where the third album is just kind of a patchy project and just doesn't deliver on those particular fronts. But Drake actually came through with this project, not to say that I doubted that he would, but just kind of the concept is just interesting just because at the time it was kind of seen as if it would have been difficult for Drake to top take care which was definitely kind of the thing and i look after it i mean it's kind of a darker album it doesn't quite have like the pep of thank me later or the kind of like the sprawling commercial feel of take care i feel like i feel like take care was probably a lot more commercial this album has a lot of singles on it has about probably about as much as take care does but this one has singles that only charted in the united kingdom for some strange reason this album was popular in the united kingdom because there were at least three extra singles that charted in the united kingdom where the united states only got four singles that really were attempted with it the promotion of the album kind of rescinded after about the early fall or the mid fall of 2013 but it, it la the promotion for this album lasted until about 2014 in the UK and stuff. So it was just interesting that that kind of happened. And uh, this, it was pretty amalgamated project. I definitely like the concept behind it. Like I said, it sparked off a lot of things. It was trying to do certain things and trying to usher in kind of similar to Travis Scott, Future, Migos, Gucci Mane, some of those type folks that were trying to push forth the sound, Yo Gotti even, that were trying to usher in like a new kind of revolutionary type stuff as far as that was kind of happening. It was just kind of like the conduit behind that. I kind of feel like it was kind of like a last little taste of like what early 2010s rap music kind of was, but it did a lot of styles on here. Drake has some beat changes up on here that really kind of result in some sprawling kind of Spotify music as that was starting to cap off when you think of like streaming songs where you just kind of listen and phase out and kind of sink in the couch and that type of stuff and just relax a bit. That was the sort of stuff that was starting to happen with this album where there weren't really streaming numbers like that on Take Care and definitely not on Thank Me Later or anything before that. But it's just interesting that Drake kind of pitched on these trends like pretty immediately because this is kind of before like Spotify was around in 2013, but it didn't seem as much of like a demon send as it is nowadays. So that's just kind of the concept about it. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the singles. There were seven of them. There were seven of them, four of them at least charted in America pretty well. I mean, most of these did chart in America, but at least in terms of having like a single release and being at least tried, at least trying to be released to radio and that type of stuff, this is something that kind of happens. So the first single is Started From The Bottom. This is a pretty leery and this darker change of pace for Drake. I really like this song. It's kind of an overall highlight for Drake. It's just kind of one when you think of like, a pretty commanding song out of 2013 when it comes to rap music. This is a pretty solid and great choice for that. This has a real nice groove on the song and it's a pretty good dance bop. It's kind of an Started from the bottom is definitely like a dance club kind of song, but it's just interesting just because this is like one of the few songs on here that has this kind of beat. This is kind of like an early sense. This this song came out in the first half of 2013, like more than six months before the album came out. So it just kind of feels like Started from the Bottom was six months before this album actually came out. So that's kind of the concept where this one just has a different taste. This just kind of feels like more of like early 2010s rap music. There's not many songs that sound like this song. This is probably one of the best beats on the album. 
it's just interesting to kind of get this leery and kind of dark tune as far as that kind of goes but it's just kind of a nice one it has a great kind of bridge on the song where drake kind of sings on there at the end it's a pretty brief and snappy kind of song but it's just a highlight great kind of darker leery kind of dance club kind of song that's just not many songs are like this this is kind of a staple for Drake. This is easily kind of one of his continued highlighted hits. This is one that I would pick out out of all the Drake songs that I've heard. I mean, it's not like number one, number two, number three favorite, but it's definitely in like a good top 10, top 20 type song in terms of like some of his hits that he's continued to have as far as just being an easy kind of highlight, especially out of 2010s Drake. It's just an overall highlight, and it was a great song for like 2010s rap, but it's just kind of, it's overlooked now. I mean, most of the time when you think of Drake, you think of songs like Jump Man, and you think of songs like he did off of Scorpion, and some of those type songs, and like songs he did with More Life, and Views, One Dance, and some of those type songs, but this is kind of a forgotten about gem that I just continue to recommend. Great hook on there. The kind of surprise song that I remember from back in the day, I used to like hearing this song on the radio. It's just a really kind of gem and just a kind of R&B type gem as far as that goes. Is Hold On, We're Going Home, second single here. Just a very poppy kind of late day commute kind of song. Definite late day commute and kind of malaise. Has a very up-tempo groove and has an up-tempo groove and it's just kind of atypical makeshift for Drake. It's kind of interesting that Drake was kind of starting to cross over into some of like the makeshift and kind of more adult contemporary kind of charts and that type of stuff as far as that kind of goes more blue collar this is definitely a blue collar drake song where i wouldn't really see started from the bottom as a song you play at work and that type of stuff but hold on we're going home is definitely one that you could it just has that kind of makeshift kind of vibe about it yeah it's just kind of i mean there needed to be songs like this just to kind of cross over it's interesting kind of get drake having songs that are stretched out but this is kind of when I initially heard this album back in the day, this is the song that was just got the lion's share of the play. And this is like the only real single that I heard out of the seven singles that were on the radio and released to it. So this is the one. This is the easy kind of highlight from 2013, 2014, as far as talking about like rap music that was kind of in a more kind of relatively just kind of national feel more so than just the hardcore rap charts or the rig the hardcore rap charts or the rhythmic charts or something like that it hit pretty high it hit number four out charted started from the bottom but those were the two highest charting songs and i used to think back in the day that there were really only two singles to this album just because the other four or five singles just only hit like the hardcore rap charts the united kingdom charts and like the rhythmic chart so it's just kind of the thing so if you're looking for just like sheer billboard 100 highlights these are the only real two songs that did it but all me was the third single and this is on the deluxe edition all me was the third single and this was kind of an early bird 2010s trap gem this is definitely one that was trying to be like the shifting of sounds for the 2010s trap as far as that kind of went this is very similar to stuff that travis scott and future and migos were kind of doing around that time but it's commercial that's the thing with drake he's always kind of maintained his commercial edge so he wasn't trying to go back to underground and more low-key kind of vibes he just tried to like siphon it and kind of pump it out as far as trying to get it more kind of oriented and trying to get that this new sound kind of oriented and that type of stuff so it's very much an early bird 2010s trap gem it's a very glittery kind of beat it's a very glittery and sparkling kind of beat and just like a low-key kind of sense it's just a minor flex song and it's just a commercial trap single for 2013 where trap was kind of going through like the riveting paces as far as stretching into a new sound that would crest throughout the rest of the decade and stuff this is kind of an early highlight for that this is kind of an overlooked song it's kind of a song that i don't really see get plays definitely not one for like the blue collar radio and that type of stuff definite weekend kind of material but it's just so kind of minor and like it's kind of club oriented type sound this is it really feels like the energy is like at a six and a half or a seven in terms of craziness compared to some of the other songs that actually feel like started from the bottom is more of a riveting song than all of me, but that's just kind of thing. They're both two good club highlights. Drake was kind of somewhat in the club on this album. The fourth single is Pound Cake, and this is combined with the song Paris Morton Music 2. This has Jay-Z on there, Pound Cake does. This is a real nice one. Didn't listen to this song as much back in the day, but I do think this is a pretty good highlight. This just has some real elegant kind of soul. It's a very elegant kind of soul song. It has a very rich approach. It's a kind of a rich and sophisticated sound, and it's a very fashion song. This is definitely something that, like, when Rick Ross used to do his Maybach music kind of tunes, is that sort of element as far as that kind of goes. Jay Z sounds perfect. Jay Z sounds perfect on the song. Definitely hits kind of song. But Drake is. It's interesting just because Drake was pretty fashion dude around this time too so he despite the fact that he was somewhat early in his career still still managed to pull off a song like this just with its kind of 
it makes sense that the song is called pound cake because it just has like a rich kind of feeling towards it that's just kind of the concept uh the language was the fifth single and this is a very dark kind of song this one's just kind of a dark and riveting kind of ruminating song but it has like a social feel about it still so i like that concept it's just got a very grand this has a very grand mid-tempo pace so this one's so this one is kind of a ruminating song it just kind of has like that pep this is a new valve for drake to be able to kind of talk and just have some stuff on his mind to kind of say and stuff this mostly it's kind of talking about just the ins and outs of like the game and that type of stuff but just kind of being able to talk about how it's just an interesting song to kind of pick for a single. This is the last song that was released to radio in America as far as like a regular kind of as far as like a regular kind of billboard hit, but it just didn't chart that well. And it's too bad. I mean, really, I would have thought that it, I think Drake probably would have needed another song like Hold On, We're Going Home or Start From The Bottom. But it was at least a decent attempt to kind of get that late kind of outcast kind of fourth single as far as that kind of went. Just a very dark, ruminating kind of song. And this kind of has like a pretty nice social feel. And this as far as that kind of goes, that's a good one. Too Much was the sixth single. And this is one that was only really released to like UK radio. But this is a pretty decent song. This is an almost song for me. I kind of feel like the sample on the song is not quite as hard hitting as I'd like it to be. I, mean, I respect the pep that it has. It's definitely kind of a coffee shop and suave type bop. For makeshift it this kind of has that either more an early morning feel when you're getting coffee or evening feel when you're at like a coffee shop or bookstore or something like that it's kind of it's either morning or evening pep but it does give me like nf vibes and it's just kind of an early spotify bop at that this kind of one for like streaming and kind of going back and forth this kind of hearing these sprawling tunes and just kicking back and ruminating and that type of stuff and just appreciating things smoking one musing a little bit but it definitely has like that kind of bookstore barnes and noble starbucks kind of feel panera bread type feel some of those type places as far as that kind of goes this kind of it's just an easy kind of one reminds me of something that like coldplay would do just kind of in a more rap song sense so it's just kind of a coffee shop and suave kind of bop for that but like i said the sample just took a little bit more getting used to for me for this is kind of an almost song. And then Worst Behavior was the seventh single. This is one that came out, and I remember when this Worst Behavior kind of came out as a single in the late spring of 2014. I remember when this song charted, and around that time, I just kind of thought it was an odd song to kind of chart. I used to not like this song as much, but I do kind of respect the trend that it had. I mean, it's still kind of an almost song just because the production just does not quite hit as heavily as it should. I mean, it was, it was kind of like a... It was kind of like a kickoff song for trying to get that sort of sound oriented. I think it was just kind of in its early stages. It's very much like a train track and a foundation type song for that sort of thing. But I kind of, the beat construction was just not quite as hard hitting as I would have liked it to have been. But it's an early bird hit for 2010's Trap. Felt like a page turner in that kind of sound. Felt like a page turner and that kind of sound. It was just kind of a looming beat, but it's just kind of dicey for me. So this kind of the concept, but it is. If you're looking for like Travis Scott and future type trap gems that were not from like past 2014, 2015, those later years, this is kind of an early skeletal one that kind of did some of that. So it's just interesting that Drake was doing that like summer, fall of 2013, and that sort of thing. And so that takes care of the singles. Um, there's 15 songs on this album, and out of the 15, I wound up recommending to you 10. So I'm going to recommend those 10 songs. It would be Started From The Bottom, Hold On, We're Going Home, All Me, Pound Cake, The Language, Come Through, From Time, Wu-Tang Forever, Three, 305 To My City, and Own It. And the two almost songs were Worst Behavior and Too Much. So basically... Almost 12 songs out of 15. This would almost get a 10. It's going to get a pretty high score, but we'll just go ahead and talk about the remaining five songs that I haven't talked about. So Come Through is like a real nice, so Come Through is like a real nice R&B breezy kind of pep type tune. It's an easy kind of ladies song, and it's just kind of a hop and bop kind of tune. Turns into like some Spotify haze later on. It's that kind of streaming sense. Drake has a lot of songs on here that kind of switch up the beat and that's kind of, i mean it works at times but sometimes it doesn't like songs like furthest thing it doesn't work as much but it works on come through a lot better i feel like this is a pretty nice one it's just kind of another almost kind of coffee shop just kind of streaming and this kind of more low-key kind of more commercial blue collar type feel this with the more breeziness i mean it, it probably could be blue collar but it's just kind of a more light type version more kind of sultry kind of one for thorough kind of blue collar type feels but it is kind of a peppy one for that sort of after hours or just midday hours kind of feel as far as that kind of goes for just some breezy kind of ladies bops so this is kind of a good one 
From Time has one of the best beats on this album. If you like like beats like started from the bottom and those type ones come through, it's just a real nice one. This is a real kind of easy kind of hit for like a dark malaise kind of R&B tune. I really felt like Janae Iko really nailed this song. She has probably the best verse on here. She just, her melodies and just her assortment and her approach to how she conveys the verse was just really good and just really kind of sullen. It just really captured the energy of the song real well. This is kind of a ladies back and forth kind of bop. This is a real nice one for that. This has a good, nice groove and a good sense of style. This is an overall highlight. Probably one of the best songs on this album. I mean, I liked a lot of songs on here, but this is one of the, probably the best ones apart from some of the singles. Like Hold On, We're Going Home, Starting from the, Started from the Bottom, and All Me, The Language, some of those type ones. It's an easy kind of one. Wu-Tang Forever is just a rap song from Drake. This is kind of one where if you think that Drake has a lot of streaming and kind of after hours R&B type tunes on here and just dark R&B and that type of stuff, this is one that brings it back. Kind of like Worst Behavior, but this kind of a song that has a better beat. I feel like this is definitely kind of a creeping song. It's very murky, but it maintains kind of a commercial feel. And it's just an overall good rap song. So this is a pretty nice one that Drake kind of did. This is probably one of the few songs on here that's just strictly hardcore rap, or at least has the decent approach of trying to do it. So Wu-Tang Forever is just a real, Wu-Tang Forever is just a real kind of creeping one. 305 to my city is another kind of streaming highlight this is another spotify type bop kind of similar to come through and worse behavior and some of those type ones and too much but this one's kind of just like in between i would say 305 to my city is kind of in between like worse behavior and too much both of those late uh cycle singles where 305 to my city is just kind of like an r&b type tune somewhat but it's just kind of like trap and b it's a streaming highlight and this is kind of a song for trap and b which is kind of trap r and b it's just a song for lounging where it's not quite as crazy and as riveting as worse behavior but it's also more lively and more lively and riveting than too much so this is kind of the concept as far as that kind of goes this kind of a nice in between kind of streaming song where if you got some pep but you do kind of have some ladies around that type of stuff so it's a good one and then Own It's a real nice kind of Spotify song. And then Own It's kind of like a Spotify type rhythmic cut. This really feels like an after hours kind of song. Somewhat of a lady song was somewhat of a lady song was just kind of relaxed. I feel like it's a more relaxed type song for that sort of concept. It's kind of it has like that trap kind of bravado type feel towards it, but it's just not quite as arrogant and quite as brash as far as that kind of goes. Like songs like Worst Behavior and like All Me and some of those type songs and started from the bottom. It's just kind of got a less kind of rowdy kind of energy, but it is kind of like a Spotify type tune for just kind of kicking back and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's just interesting kind of getting some of these Spotify type tunes from Drake. He really took to that style pretty well, and it was kind of a sound that helped usher in some of that. I mean, I know that streaming probably was around in 2012, 2013, early 2013 before this album came out, but this is definitely one that helped spearhead that style and get that where it was more kind of sophisticated out and more kind of ardent in that sort of sense as far as doing that. I felt like I felt like Tina Shea's Aquarius was another album that was a real streaming masterpiece, but this is kind of like a kind of mid pace, pretty solid, good choice for like some streaming kind of after effects that just worked real well. And then you combine that with like a sense of trying to usher in like 2010s trap and you just got some good amalgamations plus some good R&B and club type bops on here. So it's pretty good. So me liking 10 and a half or basically 10 songs out of 15 plus two almost songs. I'm going to give this album like a nine out of 10. I feel like it's pretty damn good. I would almost give it a 10, but there just were a few songs I didn't enjoy. Like I didn't really like the beat at all on Tuscan Leather. That was, I didn't really like the beat at all on Tuscan Leather. That was just kind of an awkward one that just didn't capture it for me. And furthest thing was trying to be like another blue collar type jam similar to Too Much and Hold On, We're Going Home, but just didn't pull it off as well. And I didn't like the beat switch at the end of that song. And then Connect was kind of trying to be like another dark R&B type tune, like The Language and kind of come through and some of those type ones, but it just didn't pull it off quite as well. That one was just really kind of like a, I felt like Connect was just kind of a distorted type, hazy type tune, but it just didn't quite work quite as well as I would have liked it to. And somehow the beat amalgamation as to how that arrangement kind of worked was just kind of off-putting. I mean, Drake kind of will do some things with his beats on these albums sometimes, especially later on in the late 2010s, where it just kind of has like beat switches up, where it just kind of sometimes botches like the pace of some of the songs. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes there's just kind of some situations that happen that kind of botch like the the rhythm and like the tempo of the song and just in terms of how that goes but it just felt like it kind of happened somewhat it's, i mean this is enough to notch it from getting a 10 but it's still a pretty excellent album overall i would have to say so 
Yeah, I give this album a 9 out of 10. The social score, I'll give a 10 out of 10, though, just because it did get to seven singles, at least four of them charted in America, seven singles overall in Europe. So Europe probably really adored this album, I would have to say. Just overall great hits, um, kind of blue-collar, Starbucks-type tunes, stuff like that, morning pep, evening pep, coffee-type pep, and that sort of stuff. Some good, A couple good club bops was started from the bottom in all May. Kind of some elegant soul with pound cake. And just ruminating tunes like The Language, some kind of breezy R&B tunes like Come Through and some of that type of stuff. So there are some great moments and just some dark moments like From Time. So it just has some good sense of appreciation. I really felt like this is a pretty crafted album. I would almost suggest that I like this album. I don't remember because it's been since 2016 since I reviewed Take Care. But I would almost say I like this album more than Take Care. I mean, these are both a great one-two punch. Kind of like Eminem's show and Marshall Mathers LP where both of those were real top tier and excellent. That's kind of what Drake did with his second and third albums where Take Care and Nothing Was the Same. You might as well get them both because it's not really worth it as much to just really kind of decode which one is absolutely better. They're both pretty damn well excellent. So that's just kind of the thing. But nine score, ten social. In terms of the future, like Drake is supposedly working on an album called For the Dogs. He's put out records. He dropped like a trilogy albums with like Her Loss and Certified Lover Boy and then like one other one. I forget what it's called, but it came out in 2022, I think something like that. He had a trilogy of albums that came out across the past year and a half. So we'll have to see what happens with it. But this is just an overall excellent album. Definitely don't forget about this project. Don't forget about this project. Overlook gems nowadays, like started from the bottom, hold on, we're going home and all made to stuff like that. Just some easy kind of highlights to kind of reimburse yourself with.